Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. and Shana Tova. Shana Tova. I stand before you on this first night of this new year, and I look back, and I'm pretty sure there are members of the Baker family that are here. And last month, they had an incredible simcha in Fort Worth, Texas, as Porter and Andrew uh, were able to be married again. They had the pandemic one. So you might remember, as we are here on this night, then in 2019, you could gather in large spaces with lots of people. 2020, not so much. Guess what year Andrew and Porter were ready to get married in? And we had this incredible Zoom wedding where they were in one spot and the judge was in another and Meredith was in another. And so they had a lovely, beautiful wedding. Don't worry, they made sure everybody had cookies and not virtual cookies. They sent cookies to the ends of the earth. But finally this year, as well, we gather for the first time in four years to be in person in our sanctuary. They were able to gather for this incredible simcha. In August, in Fort Worth, <laughs> I'm from Texas, or I have family from Texas. I had spent summers in Texas, from Mississippi. It's hot in Mississippi, too. I live in Florida. Have you all noticed it's warm here? <laughs> it was supposed to be 107, de 107 degrees when the wedding started. And Lori Frank looked at me and said, Rabbi, you got 45 seconds. <laughs> we went a little longer. God smiled upon us. The fans worked, the coolers worked. The wedding all worked and we all survived and no one passed out and everybody was smiling. It was quite a beautiful moment. Um, but it was one of those things where you have to really pay attention to time. And this is Rosh Hashanah. It's a new moon. It's a beginning of 5,784 years since creation. And I stand tonight before you thinking a lot about time an awareness of how time moves for us. And yet, I saw something that caught my attention and added a little bit. Last year, I spoke about Ted Lasso because I wanted to up my ante as a hip rabbi that watches all the cool shows. <laughs> There's also a new budding football that's code for, in America, you call it soccer, but the rest of the world calls it football fan. So I gave a sermon about Ted Lasso. I am want to keep up that sense of I'm with it, all of you people. As you see a lot more gray in the beard this year. And so tonight I'm going to talk about the TV show The Bear. And Lisa Canarap came in and I said, Lisa, I'm hoping that at least you have seen The Bear. But Lisa, thank you. I know you haven't seen The Bear, but you said, that's a really good show that all my friends tell me I should watch. So I feel a little validated. Has anyone here actually seen The Bear? Uh, okay, we have a minion of hands. Jill, I'm glad you raised your hand. Jill did watch it with me. So um, The Bear is, um, by the way, it is um, a, for mature audiences, there's a bit of swearing and a lot of um, oomph to the show. Um, but the basic premise is um, that a man named Michael who runs a um, beef, roast beef restaurant in Chicago dies. Um, and his, one of his brothers, Carmi, um, is a chef de cuisine at a Michelin starred restaurant in New York and comes back to run the restaurant, this roast beef restaurant in Chicago. You can imagine it's a little bit of a different kitchen at a beef restaurant in Chicago. And Carmi comes back and one of the cousins, Richie, is there helping to run the restaurant. It's an incredible show. It is all about family dynamics. It's all about generations and communications. It's absolutely fantastic. In their first season, and now um, we have finished watching, we might have binged watch the second season. It's on Hulu and FX. For anyone, because that's always the question, right? When you tell someone to watch a show, you got to make sure they have that streaming service so you can watch it. Unfortunately, I cannot give out my password as I share the sermon. 
I don't, it, I'm really not want to talk about the whole show. It's really one moment in one episode that is so powerful as a message to me on this new year, and I hope for you also. In this episode, Richie, the cousin, who's a rough sort of guy, he's a divorced, he smokes, he's had all kinds of challenges and issues, and you can just see he's trying to hold it together. Um, he's the one with the knife and with the gun. It's quite a wild season. In the second season, as they're trying to change and open the, reopen the restaurant, Carmi, the chef de cuisine, this formally trained chef, sends his cousin Richie off to go work in another restaurant to be, learn how to be an expediter, a coordinator, the guy who stands there and takes the orders and shouts the directions and all of the stuff. And, and Richie goes in the first like three or four days he's putting in the, he's laying out the forks and the napkins and he works his way up through this whole incredible experience learning to run this very formal, fancy, incredible restaurant. And at the end of this episode, there is this moment as Richie's like, Did I, why am I doing this? Is this really what I need to be doing? Can I really succeed? As he is really reflecting on who he is and how he moves through the world. And he looks up, and it's right before he leaves the restaurant for the last time, and he looks up on the wall, and there's a clock down to the second, right? It, this, these restaurants run on every second, every minute, everything happens so quickly and there's a clock and underneath it is a sign that says every second counts as i know in dallas they were counting every fort worth pardon me fort worth different than dallas it might have been hotter in fort worth and every second counted and that is such a powerful message for the High Holy Days. Here we are, another year has passed, and I offer words that I share so often. Every second counts. We recognize how quickly time passes us by without waiting for our struggles, successes, or our dreams. Let this moment awaken within us a sense of urgency, a rest, respect for the unceasing motion of time. Every second counts. But I looked at, as I'm watching that show, as I'm watching Richie look at that sign, and it was just this moment where, wow, every second counts can mean something very, very different. What if it's not seconds of time but iterations. What if instead of saying every second of time counts, it's every second opportunity counts. Every second chance counts. There is Richie having had all of these challenges, almost watching the restaurant fail having a marriage that did not work out, trying to raise his daughter, trying to struggle and figure out who he wants to be. And, Rit and Carmi has given him this opportunity to go learn in this incredible space from incredible people, and, but he has to take the opportunity. If he had just shown up and blown it off and let it go and said, oh, what are they sending me out to do? This is silly or stupid or a waste of time what would have been lost. And yet, what did I see? Every second chance that we take, every second opportunity that we make happen counts. You might have heard ready, fire, and aim, right? That you look where you're going, and then you figure out where you've gone, and then you adjust. That's the theme of High Holy Days. We've just spent a month of doing reflection, looking back to see where we've come, so we can do tshuva, getting back on the path. Every second opportunity. This is about something new and different. This is a second chance. That's why we reflect. That's why we repent. That's why we atone. 
Think about all the words. Why do we say them if not to give ourselves a second chance to learn from our mistakes and grow? But I'm a rabbi, and I play with words all the time, and that's not the only opportunity that we have. What if instead of just a repetition of experience, when we say every second counts, we mean the number of people who gather to work through a challenge or celebrate a simcha. Think about that for a moment. And I'm sorry, I had a Hamilton moment because what do they have in Hamilton? A big duel. And what do you call the person who comes to help the person who's doing the duel? The second. I know the duel didn't work very well for Hamilton. Just saying. I know that. But that was the wordplay in my mind because it's about the friend that shows up to support you in that moment. What do we say? What is it in Pirkei Avot when two people sit to study together? The divine presence rests between them. When you just sit and read a book, you're just sitting and reading a book. But when you sit with a friend, with a partner, with somebody else, the words come off the page. You are starting to discuss and wrestle and think. Think of those moments of simcha. I've had it so much even in the last week of just going through an experience and a friend says, hey, I see you're going through that experience. You're going to do great. Or let's watch this. How many conversations have I had with folks who said, I've just had loss. I've just had surus, and they just need to be heard that it's hard to say goodbye to a friend. It's hard to face that challenge where your body doesn't get you where you are supposed to, where you want to go or move. Every second, those relationships, those partnerships, in Hebrew, what do you call a partnership? A chevruta. Friends working together. What's one of the first songs that our mothers sing to us? Hine matov uma naim shevet achim gam yachad. It's not how good and pleasant it is that one person sits alone at a table. What is it? How good and pleasant it is that brothers, that people can sit together in peace. Every second counts. Sometimes it's time, sometimes it's opportunity, but sometimes it's just being there. Sometimes we have to be the one that says, I need another person to be there for that challenge or that moment or that joy to celebrate with. How many of us have that person that you call when you get good news that you know who's the person that you have to call or text first? And when you get bad news, who's that person that you reach out to for support and for love and for care. We know that it's true. Every second counts. And so on this Rosh Hashanah, as we start this new year, I hope those words resonate for you. Let this new year be for believing in what could be and seeing with new eyes, opening our eyes to look at the world in a different way. May all of us look for second chances to offer. That was the beauty of the bear that Carmi saw that Richie needed the second chance and offered it to him. And then let us also be the ones that when those opportunities come, that we're willing to accept them and take them on in these challenging times that can push us to look inward, it is so easy in our day and age with all of the scariness in our world that we sometimes can get locked into our own tunnel vision. Let us listen for the invitation to join partnership. When someone at calls out to us in need or just for some company, let us listen to those invitations and also let us open, especially when our vision gets narrowed, let us welcome, reach out to others and welcome them into dialogue and collaboration. 
And while this world unfolds around us in an instant, let us judge each other a little more slowly. This year, let us try to not make everything about time and efficiency. Let us give ourselves a chance to learn and improve, friends and companions to enrich and enliven that effort. Let these holy days of awe shine a light into a corner of ourselves where we are refreshed and not just make the most of time, but find our path anew and discover or reclaim the power of adding that second and third person to bolster our efforts. Every second counts. In all the ways that we see what that word second means, to find a place of shalom and to build in this year of 5,784 to build a world of shalom. As I say, amen. <laughs>